uh, our very finest US political commentator and all-round good guy, Michael Graham, is with us. Michael, good afternoon to you. You clearly had me confused with somebody else. I know. I don't know what I was as, as I was and reading so it. Like a, yeah, as I was reading it, I thought this is. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, here. these these good. words that were coming out of my mouth they meant nothing <laughs> at all. I, what, what am I saying here? Um, well, you know, we're trying to get Joe Biden to say something here in the U.S. <laughs> there are a lot of people on both sides of the issue regarding how campuses are reacting to events in Israel and Gaza. They want President Biden to speak. Most Americans, based on the polls want him to say something that counters the anti-Israel protests, which many uh, people, including my wife, who happens to be Jewish, believe are anti-Semitic, particularly the calls for from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free. And also using the word intifada, which of course is best is most associated with the two terrorist movements from the Palestinians. Um, and then there are some other people who are on the side of ending support for Israel, or at least trying to force Israel out of Gaza who see what Israel's doing, they call it genocide. They'd like to see President Biden be more vocal in his criticism of Israel. And so far, the smart people that we talk to at Inside Sources tell us that Biden is kind of blowing it with both groups because he won't firmly take a stand with either. In terms of, I mean, oh, by the way, can I just break a little bit of news here, Michael? Oh, sure. um, we've had a, a vote of no confidence in the Scottish government, but that's been defeated by 58 to 70 votes 58 to 70 so the scottish government lived to fight another day uh, <laughs> but the leader of the scottish national party has already resigned until a new leader is in place and i know that's going to be front page headlines on all the american newspapers michael uh, oh absolutely and thumbs up to all my grahams in scotland this, <laughs> you got a, uh, absolutely you got a great descendant here i i know you've got lineage uh, there <laughs> as they say i've got the skirt too i have the skirt <laughs> Apparently, if you say skirt, you get into trouble. But oh, sorry. It, Darn. It is a skirt, right? Um, <laughs> listen, um, so we, we have this, what looks to me like, and I, I, look, you might correct me on this. I have a sense you won't. Um, it, I'm watching a lot of videos and I'm seeing stuff right. on social media. Um, I'm seeing Jewish students trying to get on campus, trying to go to the library, just trying to, you know, ask what's right. going on. And they're lit. I mean, it's the most disturbing thing you can see where somebody is precluded because of their religion. No, you can't come in here. You're a Jew. Right. Therefore, you know, this is for non-Jews, this area. We're actually 21st century, Michael. We are seeing this happening on campus. No, it is. And I, I, there are two things. So the issue of what should happen in the Middle East, way above my pay grade and the pay grade of inside sources, we watch politics and policy. And from a political standpoint, you could argue that Donald Trump is the luckiest SOB in the history of American politics because just like a short train ride away from Columbia University in, in you know nor the northern part of Manhattan, he's in a Manhattan courtroom where yeah. you could argue this is the number one story, the first time a former president's been charged with a crime. It could be embarrassing testimony about hush money and you know sex workers or whatever. And instead, the story out of New York that's even bigger than that is this chaos on campus. And if you just ask the average person who doesn't follow politics, who do you think is better at stopping chaos or stopping bad people, bringing yeah. order, Joe Biden or Donald Trump? They're gonna overwhelmingly say Donald Trump. Every Polls day of the week. His strongest yeah. issue is uh, leadership. And so you add Biden's problems, the border, wh whatever you think the policy should be out of immigration, it looks ugly, messy, and chaotic. You look at campuses, same thing. And then you look at the economy where from day to day our, in the U.S., our gas prices have shot up in the past couple of weeks. A growth of the economy suddenly collapses down to 1.6% last quarter. People can't figure out, okay, which way are we going? What's happening here? And that plays right into the Donald Trump, I will bring order playbook. And in terms, you're spot on. I mean, that's not lost on me either, Michael. When I, I, I see this, I think, gosh, you know, this is Biden clearly has no control over any of these areas. And, right. You know, Trump's greatest asset is that, you know, and I know some of it he talks the talk, but nonetheless, uh, I, th I think even his critics would say, I think he would be on this, whereas the, mm. uh, the, the, the incumbent um, is not on anything, frankly, other than a lounger somewhere with a tartan <laughs> blanket, perhaps. Um, asking what time is tea so in terms of 
the, the campus stuff. Look, I, I, mm. I know the media like to say, well, there's two sides to this. It's not looking right. like there's two sides to this to me in the same way that the pro-Palestinian protests have descended really into anti-Israel protests, anti-Jewish protests. That's what I'm seeing a lot of people with impunity carrying the kind of banners that if a right winger were to carry them, they'd be taken, they'd be in the, the county jail uh, by by 6 p.m. You know, th that that's going on clearly over there. It's happening over here. Um, and it's got a free pass up until now, it seems. Yes, and one of the signs that you know that uh, things have gotten you know awry when it comes to trying to cover the story objectively is in UC at UCLA last night, a group of pro-Israel protesters got frustrated and they tried to start tearing down those railings that were keeping Jews out of this certain part of campus. And it turned into a, a fight, a melee. And the media suddenly jumped, oh my gosh, look at the violence. <laughs> So, of course, the respect, reaction from many people is, wait a minute, there's been violence on the campus for, what, a week now? And only when it's people who are the counter-protesters who get involved, that's the tell that the people who are trying to tell the story are under, you know, they're, they're downplaying the violence and the language and the rhetoric of the pro-Palestinian people, and they've been outed. And then the other thing that's driving a lot of Americans crazy is watching these students talk one of the people who helped take over the building at Columbia came out and said, we demand that you let us order, you know, food delivery service. You owe us food and water while we take over your building. Otherwise, we're going to dehydrate to death in the building. I mean, so wait, wait, wait. So you take over someone else's property and then you demand that they send you pizzas and beer as a thank you? <laughs> what, are you kidding me? And they couldn't. When, when someone asked her, well, wait a minute. You took the building. They want you out. They're not going to help you get food and water. They want you to leave for lunch so they can have the building back. Is this the kind of community that we want? Well, I think what most Americans would say is we want the kind of community where people don't take over your property. Yeah. I think that's probably the kind of community people want. I, I think so. And some of the stuff I was watching, Michael, uh, was... I, I mean, if it was in any other context, it would be a kind of sitcom <laughs> with Larry David right. in it. You know, it's that you've got... You've got these students, all of them seem to like wearing a COVID mask for some curious reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they're that smelly that they've all got <laughs> contagion. Um, I don't know what's going on. but th So they've all got their masks on and they seem to opt for the sort of silent treatment in some of the some of these occasions right. where uh, you know a kid comes in and says i need to get to the library and say you, know, you can't come in here sir you know why not you know well because you can't they won't say out loud because you're right. jewish but that's what they're saying um and they sort of, in a very kind of sinister way, crowd around somebody mm -hmm. and just stop them. And, of course, when they try to get through, then all hell breaks loose. Hence right. the reason why the cops are there and uh, they've taken some action. But it's a very disturbing place, isn't it, that we've arrived in, in the 21st it, century, where we are kind is, of reacting re, re out what right. once happened many decades ago. And I think that's the thing that's kind of catch people off guard is... The premise, if you were treating a bunch of evangelical white Christian guys like this, you know, it would be bad, but you, it would be more understandable because this is where politics is. You know, uh, Jewish Americans are both part of the coalition of the Democratic Party in America. And yeah. they're also, of course, they've suffered the worst discrimination, you know, in the last 150 years. I mean, it is an issue that everyone's familiar with. And to see that progressives are willing to take their politics so far that they're willing to target the group that was already targeted in the worst way in the modern era shows just how extreme yeah. they're willing to take their politics. And the problem that Democrats have is they don't know how to answer because they can't afford to lose the progressive left, but they also That's, are, you know, don't know what to do about this. The Democrats who are in their Jewish that is their absolute co coalition. Yeah, we're seeing it with politicians over here. They can't just they just can't bring themselves to fully uh, d decry or criticize that group. Do you have time for Be one more thing? Very quickly, Michael. You're, you're flying people to Africa. Yeah. The Biden administration what? leaked that they may be flying people from the Palestinian, uh, from Gaza to America. They're talking about flying in Palestinians to the United States. Really? You want to lose this argument in America? Start flying people in from the region into the <laughs> U.S. on purpose. Even Egypt won't take people from and that, Gaza. And they're next door country. to it. Exactly. Not so, alive. That's whether a... it's the right or wrong thing to do, the Biden administration's floating it. I predict it will get shot down like a Chinese balloon over South Carolina. There it is. Listen, Michael, 
Always great to get your take on these things. Michael Graham, who can bring serious news in a, a rather more wry fashion. Thank you to him. He